Have you ever wondered how the programming world has evolved over the years? How did we transition from simple procedural codes to sophisticated functional programming? These questions lead us to the exciting journey of programming paradigms. A programming paradigm is a style or way of programming. Some languages make it easy to write in some paradigms but not others. Today, we're starting this journey with the grandparent of them all, procedural programming. In the early days of software development, procedural programming was the go-to paradigm. It's like a recipe, providing the computer with a series of step-by-step -step instructions. Each step is an operation, a procedure, which the computer executes in order. Think of it as a to-do list for your computer. Procedural programming is all about procedures, also known as routines or subroutines. They're basically a sequence of commands that perform a specific task. And just like a well-organized to-do list, similar tasks are grouped together in these procedures. Now, some of the most popular languages that use this paradigm are C and Pascal. They've been the backbone of many legacy systems and are still in use today. But no paradigm is perfect. While procedural programming is great for simple tasks, it can become cumbersome as programs grow in size and complexity. It's a bit like trying to manage a massive to-do list. The more tasks you have, the harder it becomes to keep track of everything. Another limitation is the lack of real-world modeling. In procedural programming, data and procedures are separate entities, unlike the real world where objects have both properties and behaviors. Despite these limitations, procedural programming has had a profound impact on the programming world. It laid the foundation for the way we think about software, breaking down complex tasks into manageable procedures, and yet the limitations of procedural programming eventually led to the emergence of a new paradigm. A paradigm that attempted to make software more like the real world. Procedural programming with its step-by-step -step instructions laid the foundation for what was to come, but its limitations led to the emergence of a new paradigm. As software grew more complex, the procedural approach started showing its limitations. Enter object-oriented programming. This paradigm shift took programming from a series of procedures and transformed it into a world of interacting objects. Each object, like a cog in a well-oiled machine, has a specific role, encapsulating certain data and behaviors. This encapsulation is a cornerstone of object-oriented programming. It's like a protective bubble that shields data from unwanted access. It promotes data integrity and makes the code more secure. Picture it as a safe. You can't tamper with what's inside unless you have the right key. But encapsulation is just one piece of the puzzle. Object-oriented programming also introduced the concept of inheritance. Think of inheritance like a family tree. A child object can inherit characteristics from a parent object, which makes the code more efficient. This inheritance reduces redundancy, promotes code reusability, and makes it easier to manage and maintain. Then, there's polymorphism, another key feature of object-oriented programming. Polymorphism is like a chameleon. It allows objects to take on many forms. An object in a program can be treated like an instance of a parent class, or any of its subclasses. This flexibility simplifies the code and makes it more adaptable to change. These three pillars, encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism, transformed the way developers wrote software. They made the code more modular, more manageable, and more reusable. And it wasn't long before languages like Java and C++ embraced object-oriented programming, making it the standard for many software developers worldwide. But programming paradigms, much like technology itself, are ever-evolving. Object-oriented programming brought a new level of organization to programming, but it wasn't the end. The quest for more efficient and manageable code led to the development of another paradigm. With the rise of multi-threaded and distributed computing, a new paradigm emerged to tackle these challenges, functional programming. Functional programming, often regarded as the brainchild of academia, is a paradigm that takes a mathematical approach to problem solving. Unlike procedural or object-oriented programming, where code is executed in a sequence or based on objects, functional programming treats computation as the evaluation of mathematical functions. It eliminates any changes in state and mutable data, a stark contrast to what we've seen with procedural and object-oriented paradigms. The beauty of functional programming lies in its simplicity. It's all about pure functions, functions that have no side effects and yield the same result for the same input, regardless of when and how many times they're called. This immutability and statelessness make functional programming particularly effective for handling complex, multi-threaded tasks, 
where the elimination of state change reduces the risk of bugs creeping in. Functional programming also shines in the realm of distributed computing. Its stateless nature makes it easier to divide tasks among different processors or servers, as there's no need to worry about inconsistent states. This makes functional programming an excellent tool for handling massive data processing tasks, like those found in big data analytics or machine learning. Popular functional programming languages include Haskell and Clojure. Haskell, a purely functional language, is known for its strong static typing, non-strict semantics, and innovative type system. Clojure, on the other hand, is a dynamic, general-purpose language that offers a rich set of immutable, persistent data structures. Both have been instrumental in pushing the boundaries of functional programming and continue to inspire new languages and paradigms. Functional programming, with its emphasis on immutability and statelessness, revolutionized how we approach complex problems. But the evolution didn't stop there. As the complexity of software grew, the need for languages that could support multiple paradigms became apparent. Hence, the birth of multi-paradigm languages. These languages, as their name suggests, are designed to support multiple programming paradigms. They are like a Swiss army knife for developers, offering a range of tools and methodologies to tackle a diverse set of challenges. Instead of being restricted to a single approach, programmers can now choose the best paradigm for a specific task, whether it's procedural, object-oriented, or functional. Let's take Python, for example. Python is a popular multi-paradigm language known for its simplicity and readability. It supports procedural programming for straightforward tasks, object-oriented programming for complex systems with many moving parts, and even functional programming when a more mathematical approach is required. Another example is JavaScript, the backbone of modern web development. JavaScript started as a primarily procedural language, but has evolved to support object-oriented and functional paradigms as well. This versatility makes JavaScript a key player in everything from front-end user interfaces to server-side logic. But why the need for such languages? Well, as software development evolved, it became clear that no single paradigm could address all challenges. Procedural programming excels at linear tasks, but can lead to messy code in complex systems. Object-oriented programming organizes code well, but can be overkill for simple tasks. And while functional programming offers powerful mathematical models, it can be hard to grasp for beginners. Multi-paradigm languages bridge these gaps, combining the strengths of each paradigm while mitigating their weaknesses. They offer programmers flexibility, allowing them to switch paradigms as needed, leading to more efficient and maintainable code. In essence, multi-paradigm languages are like a toolbox, providing the right tool for the right task. They have ushered in a new era of flexibility in software development, enabling programmers to tackle complex problems with more precision and efficiency. Multi-paradigm languages have given developers the flexibility to choose the right tool for the task at hand. From procedural to functional, each programming paradigm has shaped the way we develop software. Our journey began with the simple, step-by-step -step approach of procedural programming, setting the foundation for how we first interacted with machines. Then, we saw the rise of object-oriented programming, bringing a new level of abstraction and encapsulation, forever changing the way we design and build systems. The advent of functional programming introduced us to the world of pure functions and immutable data, enhancing our ability to write declarative code and manage side effects. Finally, we arrived at the era of multi-paradigm languages, where the strengths of one paradigm are combined with another, offering us the flexibility to choose the best approach for each task. Understanding these paradigms is not just about learning how to code, but also about appreciating the rationale behind their evolution and their influence on the modern programming languages we use today. The evolution of programming paradigms is a testament to the ever-evolving landscape of technology. It's a thrilling journey, and we can't wait to see where it leads next.